I got into the semis audition and I was like, I feel ready for this. And and whatever excerpt you want to throw at me, whatever sight reading, whatever you want me to play again, maybe in a different style, like I'm ready for this. This is Ben Gunnarsson, and he recently won a job with the president's own Marine Band. I had the opportunity to sit down with him and do a podcast episode and talk to him about how he prepared for this audition. Preparing for an audition it can be a very involved process. It can also be a very simple process. For me, the process of getting ready for the audition and preparing for it, I think, was um, not just a a process of working, but a process of discovery too. Before Ben was able to win the Marine Band audition, he had had a couple of close calls in previous auditions. I was in three different finals for the same branch in a row. I went three times in a row to this same military band, made it to the finals all three times and did not make it did not get selected on any of those three tries. The process of auditioning is grueling in its own right, but making finals three times in the same ensemble and not winning, that's gotta be really tough. You know, you get to the end of the third one, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, the, the pressure starts to mount up, the, the mental pressure on yourself to be like, all right, what did you do wrong? So how was Ben able to deal with the pain of getting so close and not winning, as well as deal and manage the stress that may come in future auditions? When we're talking about, especially things like performance anxiety or, or being able to perform under pressure, there's a lot of discussion about self-talk. And when I was exposed to this idea of monitoring your self-talk and, and making things more positive and making your self-talk into something that's going to be a little bit more productive, I had a lot to learn. I realized that there were a lot of things that I was saying to myself like, oh, I'm not good at double tonguing. This excerpt just isn't my style. I don't play jazz. I had to realize with my self-talk, well, those statements are a little bit opinionated and aren't super objective. They're not helping me. I don't know about you, but I can definitely relate to Ben's comments. When I was younger, I used to say things to myself like, I can't play fast music, or I'm only good at playing in an orchestra, or I can't play soft. So what does Ben suggest that we replace those negative thoughts with? Somebody that I talked with about this a lot was Nathan Warner. One of the first things that I was exposed to was instead of saying that you're bad at something, you have to say that it's a future strength. And from then on, I started catching myself whenever I would think things or assume something about maybe how I was playing or how an excerpt went or something like that to double check and be like, is there a way to envision maybe this question or this statement in a way that's going to be more productive? So like, Instead of saying, I'm just not a great double tonguer, I would say instead, double tonguing in the past has been something that I struggled with. Double tonguing is something that I can improve a lot more on. For me, one big takeaway from Ben's story is the necessity of reframing negative thoughts into more positive ones, not only so we feel better, but that we actually work with the confidence and the hope that some of these struggles that we are going to experience, we can overcome eventually. Diving more into the nitty gritty of everyday audition prep, Ben had some interesting thoughts on how he kept track of the progress that he was making. I think. There are so many ways to improve. This is what worked for me and, and what I've learned has worked for a lot of people. I made sure that I took uh, really specific notes on the stuff that I was doing. And I know that it's like, oh, well, duh. But for those of you out there that have never tried, keeping an audition journal um, and keeping uh, notes over what your excerpts are doing and, and day to day, you know, recording yourself every day and listening to it. The more people you listen to, they will all say that. Uh, and it's not a coincidence. And as somebody that didn't used to do that, now I know. It really does make a difference. This approach that Ben outlined might sound pretty basic, but you'd be surprised how effective it is to just take notes regularly on the recordings that you're regularly making for yourself. So you might ask yourself, why is it so effective to prepare this way? Well, the reality is, is no matter how good you think you are at listening to your sound while you're playing, there's just no better way to get feedback on your actual efforts, what you actually sound like, than recording yourself. 
Then when you take that accurate feedback from your recordings and you begin to make notes on what things you need to improve upon, you're giving yourself the best chance to solve the problems that you're actually experiencing. Besides, if you're trying to listen to yourself and figure out what problems you're having while you're playing, you're likely not putting yourself into the kind of headspace you need to be in for high level performance. As I was working on all of these excerpts, I think there were, oh gosh, maybe 20 or so for this, this Marine Band audition. I made sure to keep track of what was going on for each one. For this most recent audition, I ended up just using a good old little spiral notebook here. I kept track of each excerpt I, I wouldn't say it was day to day, but it was like lesson to lesson or recording to recording. I would make sure, I, I mean, I was getting a lot of lessons on all of this stuff and getting some great feedback. And I was also doing a lot of mock auditions. And between those two sources of feedback, basically each time I did one of those, I would go through and be like, all right, how did this excerpt sound? What was missing? What is left to be desired? And maybe how would, should I try and do that next time? I also have a spiral bound notebook like the one Ben described, except for this one was made for me by my daughter. Uh, you can see it's kind of some, some string or some twine here that she made. And I use this on every single audition I've taken since she's made it. It's so helpful when I'm practicing to be able to go back and look at what I wrote on previous days so that I spend less time trying to figure out what to do and I spend more time imprinting exactly what I want to sound like on the trumpet. Most of the time when I interview people who have won auditions on my podcast, we spend a lot of time talking about how they prepared, but rarely do we talk about the actual audition itself, what happened on the day of the audition and then the night after the audition and things like that. One of the most fascinating parts of Ben's interview is when he shared what he did the night after he advanced from the prelims. So he played the prelim round, he advanced, and then the semifinal round would be the next day. He shared what he did that night in order to prepare himself for the semifinal round. They came in and they said that myself and the, the person that I went right after me had been advanced. And I was like, okay, great. That's the message I wanted. I'm going home because I've got work to do. You know, I've got a big day tomorrow. So I did a lot of listening that night. I did a lot of uh, still continuing to edit my process cues. I did a little bit of playing through each excerpt, but really not very much. Then the most important part happened was I went to my notes and I started writing. And I wrote down my plan for the next day. When are you gonna get there? When are you gonna have lunch? When are you gonna drink water? You know, when, stupid, st like when are you gonna get up and go to the bathroom? Like I wrote like a checklist for the, for the, the next day of auditioning. What needs to happen? When are you gonna do it? I personally have had uh, varying amounts of confidence on the auditions that I've taken over time. When I was younger and I was on the circuit, I seemed to have a lot of confidence in my ability to advance and to win an audition. But lately these days, I seem to have a lot less confidence that even though I feel very prepared, I don't feel as confident that I'm gonna walk in there and wow everybody or whatever you have to do to advance and win an audition. Let's listen to what Ben's mindset was the night before his semifinal round. I had already decided in my brain, I'm gonna win this audition. That was, and, and I know that that sounds a little kind of eggheaded, a little bit selfish, but I, I had to have the mindset of like, all right, I'm going to win this audition. So here's the things that need to happen. So I even wrote out, all right, once you get through semifinals, then what do you do? It's gonna be a short turnaround from semifinals to finals. In that 45 minutes or maybe hour that you're gonna have, what do you need to do? Again, following my idea of journaling and taking these notes, and I wrote it all, I gave myself instructions. And it really helped because then I got there on Tuesday morning and I didn't have to think very hard about what to do. I just followed the instructions that I gave myself based on feedback from the day before. And that really helped. This mentality actually makes a lot of sense to me. Of course, you can't guarantee that you're gonna win an audition just because you say you do. There's a lot of different factors at play, but setting the intention that you were going to win this audition, or in Ben's case, that Ben would win this audition, made him work in a way that a winner would work. He took his notes, he made his plan, he had his mindset right, as if it were somebody who would eventually win the audition. As he's sharing the story, you can hear that he did everything he could think of to prepare himself for the next round. Well, almost everything. I had had, had a phone call that night, the night before the semis and finals, with my fiance, and I had said, all right, here's how the day went. It was pretty good. You know, I, I felt my heart rate get a little funky in the, the first round, and, and I 
I'm just hoping that it goes well today. And she told me, oh, just use this breathing thing that I that I know. And I, somehow I had never heard of it. I'd done a lot of breathing stuff, but I had never heard of this breathing technique. And she said, oh, you just do that. Just try it. And I tried it for like five seconds on the phone call with her. And instantly my heart rate went from crazy to 60. And I was like, wow, wait a minute. This is the one thing that I've kind of been self-conscious about and that it's kind of been eking in the in the back of my brain of like, hey, don't panic, you know? We're gonna keep going with this video and the story that we're telling, but I promise I will reveal what the breathing exercise that Ben found so helpful was later in the video. The last thing that Ben did that night before he went to bed is something that I myself have tried a little bit, but have not had a lot of success in implementing successfully. The last thing I did that night was affirmations. I had never been a believer in that and and it was like, okay, you know, there's probably people that that work for. I don't really need to try it. I don't need to do whatever. And I was like, well, again, is it going to hurt me to try this? No. And if it doesn't work, is it something that will help me learn for next time? Yes. So let's just try it. Let's do some affirmations. I wrote, I am a winner. I have what it takes and I will win. And I just wrote it a bunch of times in a row and I felt really stupid writing it down the first like three or four or six lines. But by the time I got to the end of the page, I was like, dang it, I am a winner. I can do this. Like it, it was so weird. I like got goosebumps by the time I got to the end of the page. I was like, heck yeah, let's let's go kick ass tomorrow. Um, and it, it was like, okay, I guess this is working. Whatever it is, I'm feeling pretty great right now. So let's let's go to bed and get it figured out and, and do tomorrow. And that was kind of the last thing I did. After advancing out of prelims, instead of going out and partying or whatever, Ben went home and he listened a little bit and he practiced, but not too much. And then he wrote in his journal the things that he wanted to do the next day and made his plan. He got some great advice from his fiance about how to manage his heart rate. And he did some affirmations to get himself in a winning mindset before he went to bed. So how was Ben feeling when he got to the semifinal round? When I figured out how to breathe well and I had written out my whole day and I had done a lot of work to figure out how to get in the mental right space and stay focused, it was like I got into the semis audition and I was like, I feel ready for this. And and whatever excerpt you want to throw at me, whatever sight reading, whatever you want me to play again, maybe in a different style, like I'm ready for this. You've known from the beginning of this video how this audition turned out for him, that he indeed won, and hopefully you can hear through his story that him winning this audition was no accident. Each audition that he had taken up to this point taught him something, and he added all of those lessons together to be able to put together a winning package for this audition. Tackling and finding solutions for all of the issues that you end up facing, you start running out of reasons to fail. And I think if there's a way to summarize my experience getting to the end of that audition and winning, if you keep going and tackling stuff and working on it and, and you know, maybe struggling a little bit and finding new solutions, eventually you start figuring out ways to solve all those problems. And then when you, the audition happens, there's not much left that can go wrong. I love this takeaway from Ben because it gives so much importance to all of the auditions that we take, not just the one that we would win. Seeing the process as a way to continually learn about how to solve problems gives meaning to all the experiences that we have when auditioning, even the times that we think we fail. I promised earlier that I would share what the breathing exercise that Ben learned from his fiance was, so here it is. It's called a box breath for everybody that's wondering. It's where you take in a slow breath that's metered. You hold, you hold it at the top or suspend it at the top, and then you release it for the same amount of time. Actually, I like to double the amount of time that you take to release it all. And then you pause at the bottom too for, let's say it's three counts in, three counts suspend, six counts out, three counts at the bottom. And then you just do that cycle maybe two or three times. I actually tried this when I performed with Malice Toward None with the Alabama Symphony Orchestra recently. I was a little bit nervous. I had some pent up energy. I wanted to do a good job. And so the piece that was before mine, before I went on, I just stood backstage and I did this box breathing. I breathed in for three counts, held it for three counts, breathed out for six counts, kind of held myself at empty for three counts. And honestly, it worked exactly as well as Ben described it did. 
With all this information from Ben, we now have a blueprint for how to develop healthy and positive self-talk, how to refine and get the excerpts going so that they're ready to be performed, and then also how to make a plan at the audition itself to set yourself up for success. But what if you're new to auditions and you don't know what the excerpt should sound like or how to play in the right style? If that describes you, you need to click on the video on the screen right now.